Well, that's the most famous uh, photograph that there ever could be of Helen and I um, with the Harbour Bridge in the background. You remember there was one rotary down under that came out with the president of Rotary on the front and um, we could all rock up and have our photographs taken. And um, it was a pretty stunning photo, actually. Thank you. OK, so um, we have this little small group of people today to talk about it. Um, we were hoping that Darren, Daryl Works would come too. He attended the Rotary meetings, but obviously something has happened to him and he hasn't been able to come. So we've got Stephen Brown, Paula Gentle and Helen Hancock to talk about their experiences. So um, for me, this is my second convention. I went to the convention in Lisbon last year. Um, I decided I don't want to be a convention junkie. Uh, in Lisbon, I met a couple who had been to 36 conventions. <laughs> they make that their annual holiday, and I thought, no, not for me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, for this convention, we had Nikki and Anthony Scott, uh, Stephen and Elizabeth Brown, and Marion Cowden and Jeff Eads were there, and the rest, and Richard Norman, and he's not able to be here today. So, uh, there was quite a crowd of people there, and it was really very interesting time. So, I've just put a few little notes up just so I will know what to say. Um, the free transport to and from the city to uh, the Olympic Park was absolutely fantastic. The trains were free, paid for by the New South Wales government, and they went every uh, quarter of an hour. And very long trains absolutely filled with convention delegates. So we had this wonderful opportunity to talk to people from all over the world. We learned so much from them, and we're just totally blown away by the number of projects that they were doing and uh, all the activities that were going on. Paula's going to talk about the uh, Ryla pre-convention. Um, I went on the world record-breaking bridge climb. So um, there were 340 of us on the bridge at the same time, and we had 273 flags. So that was a world record for both flags and number of people on the bridge at the same time. But the stunning part about of it was that it cost... $248 to do the climb, of which the company that runs the climb gave half of that to Ending Polio Now. So there was enough money uh, coming from the bridge climb for 270,000 young people to be vaccinated against um, polio. So that was pretty stunning. Then there was the polio walk in Polio Now, and there were a huge number of people went in this 3K walk. <laughs> Helen and I were just too stunned and busy. We just didn't have time to do it. But uh, we admired the people who did, so quite a lot of money went into the End Polio campaign. People paid $30 to enter that, and they got a free T-shirt. And here's a man who was really quite amazing... He rode his lawnmower all the way from Perth to Sydney, 2,800 kilometres. He was. He comes from the Rotary Club of Armadale, um, and he was raising awareness for in polio now. So, I mean, you have to say that's pretty over and above the call of duty. Uh, this is uh, for Peter Cullen, especially. These are people from, uh, from Colombia. They were attending the convention and, <laughs> and they're going into the House of Friendship. Um, Helen and I, you'll see, we're wearing these volunteer things. Uh, we volunteered to be sergeants at arms, so we worked in the House of Friendship, the Bilbong House of Friendship, just guiding people to where they wanted to go and also to the opening ceremony, making sure that people got into uh, the right place to sit. And this is the crowd at the opening ceremony. So um, at Rotary Conventions, people are forever jumping up and clapping and standing ovations. Seriously, you have no chance of getting a deep venous thrombosis. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
This is the Australian flag being delivered at the opening ceremony, so they have quite a, a flag ceremony. Um, here we have the uh, person who was convening all the sessions. Um, he got some youth exchange students up onto the stage on the second day to teach him how to do a traditional Australian welcome. Um, he, he, he wasn't too bad at it. He, he learned. Yeah. Um, so as I said, Helen and I did the uh, volunteer sergeant at arms and there were 384 booths in the f Friendship House. It was just fascinating to see uh, what was on display. The amount of work going on in Rotary Worldwide is really quite astounding. I was a voting delegate. I just put myself into that position. Every club can have a voting delegate to vote for the world president-elect and the world president nominee. Well, hey, it's a fait accompli, isn't it? But you go and sit in a special place in the uh, auditorium and you cast your vote. I don't think anyone would dare say no. These people have been groomed for the job for years. So there were plenary sessions daily and um, Stephen's going to talk about some breakout uh, sessions. If you've had a position in Rotary, you can get a um, little ribbon for your badge, so there's quite a competition for how many ribbons you can get. Uh, and we did have dinner with the Melbourne Club, so that we've started the relationship with the country 1921 clubs, five uh, countries that had their first um, club chartered in, in 1921. So we're hoping that we'll be able to do a project with them as part of our centenary, but people from there will be at the um, Institute and we're going to discuss that further with them then. And my last little slide is uh, Australian and New Zealand um, rotor actors who were riding around in one of the little vehicles that would take you uh, from place to place. So, Stephen, thank you. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, I don't have a sash and I don't have a hat. <laughs> But uh, I hope you can put up with the rest of what is to follow. The International Convention was a fantastic event, a really overwhelming um, series of events, and the major part of it for me was the breakout sessions. And the major challenge was to try and organise your timetable so that you could get in as many breakout sessions as possible in the amazing facility of the Olympic Park in Sydney. Uh, that, fa that facility really has to be seen to be believed. It's enormous. Uh, it covers hundreds of acres. Uh, there are obviously the, 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 the big arenas, but there are many, many buildings with lots and lots of um, uh, rooms and, and meeting halls. And on any day, uh, you would have the choice of several hundred different sessions to go to, uh, which, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so the one that I want to talk about in, in the main is our main focus uh, rotary at the moment, and that is the polio eradication program, uh, in which we were addressed by the Secretary General of the World Health Organization. Now, this is a very interesting address uh, when you bear in mind the amount of publicity that we don't get in the news media uh, about our efforts in relation to the eradication of polio, and in particular, I think about some media that I saw just um, uh, recently uh, pouring scorn on Bill Gates for uh, their contributions to the eradication of polio, uh, which you know, it is pretty odd to me. But anyway, the, the, the major uh, areas where, where polio is still existing uh, are areas sometimes where it's difficult to get access to because of the, uh, the safety concerns on the ground. And um, 
there's, a, there's an element about disease control which, which I'll uh, explain to you uh, because it's been suggested to me that some people in this room may well be aged more than 50 years. Now, now if, if you are of this, um, in this group, could you raise your hand, please? <laughs> now, of, of those people, how many of you have had polio? No hands are raised. Statistically speaking, 25% of you are mistaken. 25% of you have had polio. Polio comes in many, many forms, and many of you will have had polio, which was misdiagnosed as growing pains or rheumatic fever or something, and you, you weren't adversely affected by it, but you were very, very uh, much advantaged by it because with that little tinge of polio that you had, you became immune. Your body learned how to defeat the polio virus. This is a tool that can be used to immunize people who don't know that they're being immunized. If there's an area in the world that is controlled by, uh, you know, for instance, some, some kind of fanatics who won't let the, the, the workers in, then you can immunize a proportion of the population by ensuring that all of the surrounding population is immunized. They spread their mild version of the disease which immunizes the population that you can't get at. And that is one of the tools the World Health Organization is using in conjunction with Rotary to ensure that we eradicate this disease. Another issue that I was very interested in uh, in a breakout session was the recruitment of younger people into Rotary. And my comments about those few of you who are age 50 or more um, might apply. But there is no reason why we don't charter young clubs, clubs particularly aimed for young people. And one of the things that we don't do is we don't follow up on our alumni, our Rotary Scholars, our Youth Exchange. We don't keep a database. We don't follow them up. We don't go back to them uh, when they're 30 or so and say, OK, you, you've been a Youth Exchange student. Now come in and become a Rotarian. And it's one of the things that we need to think about. I think that's probably my time. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I guess I'm going to talk about my 10 days of Rotary. I went on International Ryla, the Rotaract pre-convention and the full Rotary convention. So I started uh, my, my trip there going into a group of about uh, 68 uh, people from 18 to 30, and that's International Ryla. So why was I there? I um, am on the RILA organising committee for this district and I had the opportunity to apply. They gave all of the committee members, so there's a group of about 10 of us, that uh, give back to RILA each year. And um, I applied, got in, and fortunately the, the committee was able to cover my costs to go over there. Um, so that was amazing. Um, what I learnt when I got there is I'm not alone. Uh, there's so many passionate people at my age who have been in or currently are in Rotaract and they are currently helping and giving back to their own district Rylas. Um, just many cultures. Um, there was people from all over the world definitely had the international part of this international Ryla. So there was people from Brazil, there was a person from Russia, from the UK, um, yeah, plenty of Australians obviously. Um, and it was just amazing and I think the district Ryla is able to sort of focus on the personality traits, but also the international RALA adds to that and adds on to the cultural significance. And you have to work across many different cultures um, within the activities that they they have they had on international RALA. So you had the, the normal team building, but there was also different dynamics within each group. Um, it was really amazing, actually. 
um, and I've, I've got places to stay all over the world. So that's the power of Rotary. It's all the networks and, and the friends and the long-term friends that you make with, with people that have similar values. So I think that, that's amazing. So after four days of international rala, I continued on to the Rotaract pre-convention. So everybody that was on uh, international rala was expected to carry on or got the opportunity to carry on to the, for the next six days. Um, and I guess the highlight of the, the Rotaract pre-convention was we had uh, Ron Burton actually come and talk to us about how to engage with, uh, how he's trying to engage with the, the younger generation and how, uh, like Steve, uh, Stephen said, um, get in contact and, and create new clubs. And with my role, uh, I'm also on collective impact within this club, which is a, a young professional sort of group. And he mentioned that that's what they need to do. And that was quite <laughs> uplifting to say we're actually heading in the right direction. And they was talking about young people don't necessarily have the time to have weekly meals or um, have the money to be able to afford the, the weekly meals. And time is, is kind of, uh, they've got a lot of time commitments already. So he whispered into the mic, he's like, I don't care if you have a club following all the rules. He said, don't tweet that. But <laughs> um, someone yelled out they already had, but I think they were joking. Um, and I think that's quite uplifting to know that Rotary International is actually thinking about how do, how do they engage and maybe the, the conventional clubs don't meet the requirements of the, the youth today. And I guess as a 27-year-old a um, who is an ex uh, oh well, who's been on Ryla and has gone in and I'm officially a Rotarian uh, through your club, so thank you for that opportunity. And um, I think the whole... Um, experience of international rala, the, the Rotaract pre-convention and the amazing vibrancy of the Rotary convention was a really great opportunity and I recommend that if you guys get to go, it's a different side of Rotary that you may not necessarily get to see on a day-to-day -day basis, so thank you. So now she looks at this, which button do we push? <laughs> the right one. My topic is um, My Rotary. So there's a website out there and... No, that's not that one. Oh, there we go. Because you're a member of Rotary, you are able to log into My Rotary and get this wealth of information. So that is the, the link, and I might ask Rebecca if she'd send it out to you all in a special email so you can just click on it and get going. Um, when you get there, you've got the option to sign in. Now, I decided not to take print screens because you wouldn't have been able to see anything. So when you get there, you've got the option of sign in or create an account. So if you are not already a member, you click the create an account. And then you follow the directions. <coughs> now, your Rotary ID number is what's on your RDU magazine that gets delivered to you. You may or may not open it. But the next time one turns up, please read the address label because it's got your number on it. You always knew it'd be handy for something. Now, when you get in there, I mean, there's just so much that is so useful to understanding Rotary because what I realised with a bit of Colleen's advice when I joined in 2010 was there was more to Rotary than this club, that there was the district. And then I realised, because I, I read a lot, that the conference or the convention, I've been told off for calling it the Sydney Conference. Um, so it's the Rotary International Convention. I just knew that because it was going to be in Sydney, then I would plan on going there because the thought of going to Brazil, which is the next one, wasn't so good. But you get in there and you start finding all of these things and you can click to receive the emails. I personally don't because there's too many emails. But you can choose the newsletters you're going to be receiving. So. Rotary leader, there we go. Do you get that email? No, but if you don't, you can log in and just read it online. You don't have to be um, doing it. The new generation, so there's whatever committee you're on, there's a lot of information in there that's going to help you understand how Rotary International sees it. Um, the membership minute, there's all sorts of interesting things about how to develop new members, um, you know, how to bring them in, on board, engage them. Um, and like you were saying, it's more important to be engaged than to attend. 
the Rotary giving in grants, that was always quite a um, hard one to wrap my head around when you come to applying for grants and matching grants and grants, grants, who knows what they mean, but if you go in there you can find a bit more. And the other thing that's really exciting is we can find out how our club is performing based on the goals that we have set. So provided we put the information in there about what our goals are and then follow it up with what we've achieved, we can see how we're tracking. So the Rotary, the My Rotary will tell you specifically how many members we have. So I was surprised to turn up, I've got a little tick by my name, that I have introduced one member. So I'm a blue tick. And I thought, oh, I wonder who that was. And it was Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even remember. Um, so that's how you find out how our club's performing. But of course, if we don't put the goals in and then follow it up, we don't, that information could be rubbish. There's all this line of stuff about how to learn. So there's the learning by reference. There are webinars you can go and look at, um, keyword searching to find anything you could think about. And the branding centre. So in there is every approved logo that Rotary International want you to use. So we don't ever have to keep our own set anywhere. We can just go in there and pick them up. Makes life easier. So my last call is just go there and join. Thank you.